Mr. Pip? Mr. Pocky? Why, I'm so sorry. I heard, I heard that there was a coach coming from your part of town. My, my dad thought you would be honest, so I went to the common garden to grab you some fruit. Not that that's any excuse. Oh, come on. Let's, oh. let's go inside. Let me show you to you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pocky. Mr. Pocky, may I just pull the strawberries, please? Mr. Pocky! Oh dear, my fingers appear to be jammed. Oh dear, Mr. Pocket. Pray tell, come in. We haven't much, but it should do. My father thought you would like to get on more agreeably through tomorrow with me than with him, and might like to take a walk about London. I'm sure I shall be happy to show you London to you. Here we have a table that, that will be supplied from our coffee house here. Mr. Jagger said you'd be paying. This is our sitting room, just such chairs and tables and carpet and so forth. You see, as they should spare from home. A chair is a piece of furniture with a raised surface supported by legs, commonly used to seat a single person. Chairs are supported most often by four legs and have a back. However, a chair can have three legs or can have a different shape. Chairs are made out of a wide variety of materials, ranging from wood to metal to synthetic material, for example, plastic. And they may be padded or upholstered in various colors or fabrics, either just on the seat, as with some dining room chairs, or on the entire chair. Don't credit me with the decorations, they were from the coffee house. Here's my room, here's your room. Call me if you need anything. Lord bless me, you're the town boy. And you're the pale gentleman. I'll have you know that I spent the summer in Spain getting a tan, so you should take that back. <laughs> put him up, put him up. Whoa. You may kiss me on the cheek, Pip. The idea of it being you! The idea of it being you! To think I will be living with the boy I bested in that duel all those years ago. You have the memory of a fish, because I wiped you. Agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. Well, should we be roommates, I suppose I should know your real name. Well, my name is Herbert Pocket, yo. My father is Matthew Pocket, yo. Yeah. He told me everything. Except your name. My Christian name is Philip. Nope. Well, people call me Pip. No. Nope. You're a handle now. Is it because the handle wrote that great piece of music, The Harmonious Blacksmith? No, nope. it's because you're a tool. Now, my dear handle, let's eat. Oh, I'd love to try this strawberry jam. I've already tried a little bit because, of course, you've slapped it in my mouth. Ah. By Jove, this jam is quite delicious. Why, thank you, Handel, it's homemade. So, pray tell, what is your relation to Miss Habersham? Oh, my dear Herbert, I have none. What about you? Well, my father is cousins to her. Cousins? Well, yes, but there's some bad blood between them. Oh, pray tell, oh, I hope I'm not burgeoning into private matters, but oh, I'd love to hear what's the problem between you guys. Oh, dear me. You, ha you mean you haven't heard? Well, no. It's quite the story. <clears throat> Let me tell you. Miss Havisham was spoiled rotten by her father, as her mother passed when she was a baby. Her father would later remarry and have a son, but the son's mother would soon die. As they grew, the son became rather annoying and was disinherited by the father. The father grew soft just before his death and left him with enough to get by. Miss Havisham became the heiress to her father's fortune, and her half-brother's money began to waste away to his debts. The brother got real mad at Havisham because he believed that she told her father to disinherit him, so he began to scheme. They say there appeared another man, perhaps at the races or the jam store or anywhere else you like. It's totally like man and Miss Havisham sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. And they were like totally in love and stuff, and then he was all like, you should buy out your brother from, from your father's brewery for like a bajillion dollars and then give the brewery shares to me. And she was all like, Oh yes, sweetie, of course, sweetie. That makes total sense, sweetie. And my father was all like, This seems like a scheme that will lead you to being stuck in a mental state that will later cause you to wreak havoc upon all the male sex instead of healthily resolving your problems. And she was all like, Out! Out! Go on! Get! Out! Leave! And so anyway, she did the thing the man said, and then they were gonna get married and stuff. But then, like, 20 minutes before the wedding, she got a letter that said something or other that made her sad and stuff. 
and then you would believe this next part, but it seems that the brother and the man were in cahoots, and they shared the profits and dipped and stuff, and then they died or something, I don't know, anyway, the end. Boy, oh, Joe, that's very exciting there, Habit, but uh, what about Estella? Shut up about Estella! Estella. Shut up! Estella. Shut up about Estella! Estella. No one cares, Handel! No one cares! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up, Handel! Shut up about Estella! No one cares! I care!